It's been one year since NBA legend Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others died in a helicopter crash in California. There were no survivors. Chris Martinez takes a look at the legacy Bryant left behind. On an overcast California morning one year ago, an unexpected tragedy. Basketball superstar Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna killed in a helicopter crash along with seven others. College baseball coach John Altabelli, his wife Carrie, and daughter Alyssa were among the lives lost. It was the most surreal day. It was one of the worst days, obviously, ever. Um, but in a, in a weird way, just the love and the support I got that day from so many people, I'll remember that part of the day, too. And it was equally special as it was tragic. Within hours of the crash, the area outside L.A. Staples Center began transforming into a massive memorial, countless mourners gathering from across the country. One year later, Bryant's Lakers family is still grappling with the void left behind. It's a lot of things that die um, in this world, but legends never die. And, um, and he's exactly that. In the days after Kobe's death, tributes in the form of murals like this one began appearing across Los Angeles. More than 240 Kobe murals have since been painted across the city. But beyond the tributes and memorials, questions remain about the crash and its cause. There was thick fog at the crash site. The NTSB immediately started its investigation. The FAA currently does not require helicopters like the one Bryant was aboard to have a terrain awareness and warning system, or TAWS. It's a device that helps prevent pilots from crashing. Bryant's chopper also was not required to have a black box. The more safety equipment that we can have on helicopters and aircraft, um, the more information that we can give to pilots, um, in my opinion, it can, it can only positively impact safety. But since this was such a high-profile crash, many are hopeful the equipment will become mandatory. It shouldn't take uh, a high-profile accident. Uh, for changes to be made. Lives are valuable. The final NTSB report on the crash is due February 9th. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. For more, I want to bring in former NBA player Wally Zerbiak. He is the color analyst for the New York Knicks as well as a CBS <laughs> sports analyst. And he joins me now by phone. Wally, hi, are you there? Thanks for joining us. I sure am. No problem, no problem. So, Wally, you were on the court with Kobe Bryant back in your playing days. Give us your assessment of his talent, not just as a Lakers player, but as an all-time great. Well, he's one of the top five, probably, maybe top ten. And, uh, you know, I battled up against him quite a bit, you know, having played in the Western Conference for the Timberwolves, making the playoffs. Uh, we saw them four times a year. We lost to the Shaq and Kobe team twice in the playoffs. And, you know, he was just great. He was just uh, one of the most competitive warriors, um, you know, that we've ever seen in our time. Um, so it was just awesome. It really was to, uh, you know, get that opportunity to go against one of the greats. And, um, you know, I'll never forget those times. Kobe was famous for, of course, his Mamba mentality that gave him extraordinary success both on and off the court. What kind of legacy has he left behind? An amazing legacy. And, uh, you know, first and foremost, I remember Kobe as a person. I knew him a little bit off the floor. Um, and just the legacy that he's left as far as uh, the father that he was. You know, not only was he a great player, and, you know, that's, you know, something that he achieved, you know, with all his hard work and all his talents. But he was also a wonderful person, a wonderful dad, a wonderful husband. And, um, you know, those are the things that really endear close to my heart. Uh, it's just a tragedy beyond words. Um, you know, for everyone that was on that helicopter uh, that day. So, um, 
you know, that's what I think about when I think of this day. You know, I can't believe it's been a year since that happened. And, you know, what this, what, what everyone has gone through with this global pandemic, it's just been a rough go. And, um, you know, it's just tough to uh, remember, um, you know, that, that day and, and what a shocking, uh, you know, just horrific day it was. Yeah, horrific really is the word, and you're right. I can't believe it has been a year. Well, Wally, you were on the Western Conference All-Star team along with Kobe in 2002. Tell us about your experience, and how did you find him as a teammate? He was a great teammate, and, you know, we had a lot of respect for each other, and, uh, you know, we were both ultimate competitors. I often think I would have clicked very well with Kobe, um, you know, if we had ever had a chance to play on the same team because, with him, it was no nonsense. It was all about business. And, uh, you know, that's why he won all those championships, won all those games and accomplished so much as a player um, because of his focus, his work ethic and his competitiveness. Um, so I have nothing but great things to say about him. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll always remember the times competing against him. And, you know, that was a special time being his teammate, getting to know him a little bit more off the floor and um, not just competing against him, competing with him when he won the MVP in that All-Star game and we won the game against the East. It was a, it was a big-time memory for me in my career. You know, he was also a huge supporter of women's basketball. What do you make of his impact on the WNBA? It's tremendous. It really is. And, and being a father of three daughters, um, you know, it's awesome what he did. And, uh, you know, the Mamba Academy, uh, what he was doing for youth sports and youth uh, youth basketball players, and especially his daughter Gianna, um, it was just amazing what he was accomplishing. You know, after uh, his playing days, and that says a lot about him as a person. To um, you know, continue to just shed great light on this world and his wisdom, and and give back to the community uh, the way he was doing. Um, I think it was awesome, and uh, you know, I love the WNBA. I think. You know, women's sports is is, is, is is so much fun to watch, so much fun to, you know, partake in, especially with my daughters, um, you know, having, them having played a little bit of basketball in high school and stuff like that and also playing sports. I just think, uh, you know, he was just a trailblazer as far as a lot of stuff that he accomplished and a lot of stuff that he stood for. Right. Success on every level, on and off the court. All right, Wally Zerbiak. Wally, great to have you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.